Should women, should women be pastors in churches? What does the Bible say? Today, I want us to go deep and then we'll be able to answer this specific question so that if you're going to a church which is uh, being pastored by a woman, then uh, you'll be knowing if it's the right thing or it's the wrong thing. Maybe it is right, maybe it's wrong. Let's see what the Bible says. You see, in the book of First Corinthians chapter 14, from verse 34 to 35, the Bible says the following. Let your women keep silent in the churches. Mm. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak. But they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home. For it is a shameful for women to speak in church. Hmm. You see this one, Paul is saying it is not only in the New Testament, but also it is in the law that women should not preach in church. Okay. So why is Paul saying this? And uh, is this important? And was Paul trying to be biased in any way? Now, let's, let's try and see if he has spoken in another place and why did he say so when you when you check in the book of first uh, timothy chapter 2 verse 11 downwards to verse uh, 14 the bible says again let the woman learn in silence with all subjection did you hear again he's saying that let the woman learn in subjection with all silence again there's something to do with silence here and paul is trying to say hey women shh, keep quiet Something I want to explain to you. Why? But I suffer not a woman to teach. All right? Uh -huh. Nor to unsub authority over the man. He, she should not have authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Did you see now Paul is trying to put the order of God? Adam was first formed and then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now, he has put it so clear. This is the reason why. Now, let me explain to you something, guys. And this one is to, with all love and kindness. You see, God has granted women a very, uh, a big heart in a way that they are able to comprehend so many things at the same time. Women have a gift, and this gift is uh, what we call multitasking. A woman can be feeding children, she's cooking, she's cleaning the house, she's doing this. Something which men cannot be able to do. And that is a gift. And women are emotional people. They are able to handle so many other tasks in different ways. And when Paul is saying, do not allow women to teach in church or to pastor in church he didn't mean that he he had any problem with them it's only that he was trying to bring in something and what is this thing that paul was trying to bring in remember the bible talks about how god has put in authority the order all right there is something called the order of god that he has been able to put in the whole world in the book of ephesians 5 22 let me show you something here ephesians 5 uh, verse 22 the bible explains something that you need to understand the bible says wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in uh, be unto their own husbands in everything do you see the point here so if god says let the women unsup authority of a man in the churches then he'll be breaking his own order because it is god the father god the son the husband the wife the children that is the order of god and when satan knew this he divested the whole arrangement. He changed the whole arrangement. And that's why now you're seeing that the woman nowadays is becoming higher than man. Everything has been pushed so that the woman can be higher than man. So that he can bring in confusion. So that the order of God can be destroyed. And what happens when the woman is above the man? 
the man becomes the woman the man the woman becomes the man and what does that cause it brings confusion and then it makes the order which god has been able to set be destroyed are you seeing the point and it doesn't mean that women cannot be able to do anything in church no look at this the bible tells us in the book of titus chapter 2 verse 3 to 5 the aged women likewise that they may be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. You see, they are teachers of good things, but they are, are they pastoring a church? No. They may teach the young women to be sober. You see who they are teaching? To teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So women have so many things that they can be able to do in church because they have a very special character which is called multitasking, emotional people. But men have been given logic to look far, to see where the ministry is going, to see how the church is going to grow up over a period of time. Just the same way as a family. In a family, the man is the head of the family to be able to see far, to be able to see where are we heading in the next 10 years, the next 5 years. And you see... There are some objections whereby people could say, okay, Paul was trying to say this because, you see, in the early days, the first century, women were not really educated at that time. But this one is negated by the fact that all the disciples of Jesus were not educated. So does that make them also not qualified to go and preach the gospel? You see, it's not a matter of education here. And also, some people will say, okay, uh, but there are these women who are leading in the church, like Deborah, we see Miriam, Hulda. But you see, that is the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, <laughs> the church is something which is totally different. This is the body of Christ, which is very different uh, from the Old Testament. This is a new module. This is a new agreement. This is a new testament. And this is a body Back in the Old Testament, it was not a body of Christ. It was not a body in anyone. It was people striving by their own works to try and please God individually or in communal way. But now we are a body of Christ. When we talk about the Old Testament, that's a very different module. And some people will say, okay, in the New Testament, we have Priscilla and Phoebe. In the book of Acts chapter 18, faithful ministers of Christ. Now you see, Priscilla only guided Apollos. To knowing what was wrong in his doctrine he did she never pastored any church there is no place where we see priscilla pastoring any church she only guided apollos to be able to understand that is not not about the baptism of uh, uh, of um, john the baptist but it was about the baptism of the holy spirit and that is exactly salvation was about jesus christ not the other way around and uh, we see also Phoebe was a deacon. Who is a deacon? Deacon is a servant. And uh, servant, it means that you, it's something that you can be able to do in church. Like, for example, women excel in so many other departments like um, hospitality, in mercy, in teaching, in evangelism, in serving in church. These are things that women really excel in. So this whole aspect of women teaching in church is all about putting order of how God created things to be, all right? God God created the church to operate like Jesus. Uh, I mean, uh, Jesus and the church. The way Jesus is married, he is the one marrying the church. The same way also, the same order with man and woman, it is the man marrying the woman, not the woman marrying the man. You see the, 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 the thing? And when you keep this order of God, there is no confusion because God is not the author of confusion. God is always... A God of plan, a God of reasoning, a God of arrangements. He knew even how he created the whole earth. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, you know, like that. So God is a God of order, but Satan is the author of confusion.